Hi, this is Matt Chambers on behalf of Concept3D. Today I'd like to show you how to author an imperfect dynamic component. In particular, this imperfect bike rack dynamic component. As this model is scaled, the bikes become randomly parked on either side and at random angles, much like an actual messy bike rack. The interact tool can be used to hide individual bikes. And if hidden geometry is visible, it can be used to unhide them. This tutorial will be a four-part series. In the first part, I'll show you how to create a simple component with a repeating part, the spike rack. In the second part, I'll show you how to add the bike as a child component to that existing dynamic component. In part three, I'll show you how to use the rand between function to get this controlled imperfection and in part four, we'll wrap it all together by adding a simple formula to the onClick attribute to get this interact tool functionality. Before we begin, I would recommend that you watch this video in high definition if possible. It'll be easier to see the formula edits if you do that. The controls for switching to high definition are located in the lower right hand corner of this video. Let's get started by opening a new SketchUp file. If you open the Components browser from the Window menu option, and then from the drop-down list here, make sure you're at the Component Sampler section. There's a model in here called Bike Rack Bikes. Go ahead and click on that and place it in your model. Now, this component is not dynamic, so if you try to scale it, it's going to distort. And we don't want that. I'm going to undo that, grab the Select tool, and I'll explode this component by right-clicking and selecting Explode. With the Eraser tool, I'll get rid of one of these bikes. And the other bike, I'm just going to move off to the side for the time being. From the View menu option, hover over Toolbars and click on Dynamic Components to open up that tool set. Now, if this icon to the right is grayed out, Unfortunately, that means you only have the free version of SketchUp. You'll need the pro version to follow along with the rest of this tutorial. With this bike rack part selected, let's click on that icon. Click on Add Attribute, and let's add the Size Attribute Set. These numbers reflect the size of our component. I'm going to make an edit to this component, so with the Select tool, double click, and let's select this rightmost edge right here. With that edge selected, let's grab the Move tool. And we're going to make a copy. So you'll want to tap the Control Modifier key. If you're on a Mac, you'll want to tap Option. This will be a referenced copy. So my first click is going to be on this edge right here. And my next click will be on this edge right here. I've got a good reason for doing this, and you're going to see that in a moment. But what's important is the gap between this edge and this edge is the same as the distance between this edge and this edge. While we're still editing this component, and this dashed line is letting you know that you are in component edit mode, press Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac, right click and select Make Component. Let's call this Rack Part and click Create. You can exit out of component edit mode by clicking outside of your component edit box a few times. Select the rack and take a look at your component attributes browser. You can see that the parent shell is called bike rack and inside of that you have a child component called rack part. It's time to make this component dynamic. What we want to happen is as the parent shell is scaled, we want the child component to make copies of itself that are correctly positioned. First off, let's constrain this parent shell to only be scaled in the red direction. Click on the Add Attribute and add the Scale Tool attribute. Click on the field and then deselect everything except the Scale Along Red Axes option. Go ahead and click Apply. Now if you try to scale this, you'll see that only these handles are available. But if you do scale it, you'll see that the bike rack part distorts. And again, that's something we don't want. I'll undo that. 
In order to make this rack part child component not distort, click on this little icon to the left of the name. Then add attribute, and let's add the size attribute set. We can lock these values in by double clicking on the field to edit, and adding an equal sign before each number. Now if you try to scale it, it stays the same size. In order to create copies based off of a scale, we need to add the copies attribute. The formula that I'm going to enter will be equals parent and then an exclamation point len x divided by len x and then minus one. To better explain that formula, I'll toggle formula view by hitting this icon here. This first part is just a reference outside of the current rack part component. You can always reference a parent level item by typing parent, followed by an exclamation mark, followed by the attribute that you want to reference. In this case, it's Linux. The second Linux just refers to this value right here. Now, the reason I have a minus one is to account for the one original component that creates these copies in the first place. Let's turn off formula view, zoom out a bit, and scale this to see what happens. Visually, nothing changed, but if you look at your copies attribute value, that did change. The reason is the copies are there, they're just all on top of one another. So visually, they appear as one. Let's add the X position attribute to position those copies. The formula to do that is equals copy times len X. Now if we try to scale this, they're positioned as we want them. I'll turn on formula view to explain that. When writing formulas, copy is a very powerful variable. It's a number that will be different for each copy, including the original. For this piece here, which is the original, copy is equal to zero. So the formula is zero times len x, or zero. For this one, that's the first copy. Copy equals one. One times len x is this distance here. This one is two, and two times len x is this distance here. Grab your select tool and click outside of the component. Remember a few minutes ago when I had you draw that extra line here? Well, that's the reason why. Otherwise, these copies would be placed right up against one another. We can hide that edge if you'd like. Double click once to edit the component and then double click again on this end component. Zoom in, right click and select hide. At this point, we have a fairly functional bike rack dynamic component. But I haven't forgot about the bike over here. We'll take a look at the bike in part two of this four part tutorial.